What's up, guys? It's the Blue Bloods. We've been plugging it all week. Our biggest interview yet, man. We are joined by a guy who doesn't need any introduction, but he is the starting quarterback for the Alabama A&M Bulldogs, the 2021 SWAC Player of the Year, a 2021 Walter Payton Award finalist, and led Alabama A&M to the HBCU National Championship this year. Akil Glass is joining us today, and I just want to say appreciate you coming on the show, man. No problem. Thank you for having me. You know, it's an honor for me. Yeah, dude. Um, so I, I want to go ahead and start off uh, with this season. You know, it was kind of shrouded in controversy, uncertainty, hardships for everyone involved. Uh, the SWAC and SDS in general was postponed to spring. Uh, we saw a lot of guys transfer, and we saw even more guys opt out. Um, so what was, your, what was your reaction to all this postponement, and did you consider ever transferring or opting out or anything? Uh. Uh, at first, it was hard, you know. I was looking at all these other teams opt out, all the other players opt out, you know, all the other conferences opt out. And then uh, when the SWAC had announced it, you know, it was kind of a shock. I had, I kind of, like, begun to prepare myself for it because it was just preparing for the inevitable. But uh, it still was kind of a weird feeling. But, uh, you know, as far as the transferring thing, yeah, it crossed my mind a little bit. But at the end of the day, um, I made my – I mean, my market at Alabama and them. I know the coaching staff. I I know the offense. You know, I, I have a place here. So, why why change that for the unknown? Right. Absolutely. I mean, that's that, that, that's kind of where my mind was at anyway. I was uh, yeah. Anyway, so uh, you came out of the 2017 class at Lutheran North High School in St. Louis, and you had a couple of offers uh, to FBS schools, and you're even committed to FIU at one point. So when did Alabama A&M step in, and what was it about this program that made you choose A&M? Uh, like you said, I was committed to FIU, and uh, that's when they, uh, the head coach, Ron Turner, and, uh, you know, they had a great plan for me. And, uh, unfortunately, you know, things didn't work out. Coach Turner had got fired, and uh, the new coaching staff was looking for a more, you know, dual-threat guy, and I, would, I didn't fit that bill. I felt that. For me, the most important thing going into the whole recruiting process was getting on the field as early as possible. And uh, Alabama and them came. I planned on graduating early, so they came in uh, like December, early December, and they talked to me. They offered me. I took a visit. You know, I loved it. You know, I loved the loved the coaching staff, loved, loved the environment, loved the campus, and uh, I felt I could best perform there. And you know, made it happen. And the rest is history. Yeah, I mean, it is. And this year, the 2021 SWAC Player of the Year, you guys win the SWAC Championship, HBCU National Championship. In this year, we mentioned with so many distractions, setbacks, potential unknowns, how were you personally able to achieve so such high goals personally? And how was this team able to come together and win the SWAC this year? Uh, as far as me, you know, all my goals and all those accolades – I give them to my team because without them, I can't do my job. So uh, at the end of the day, it was just about me leading those guys, making sure everybody stayed focused. You know, we were up here, we were up at school in the fall and we didn't, we didn't play. We just practiced to work out and do all that. So just getting those guys minds, right. You know, like keeping those guys ready and uh, activated. But as far as this season, you know, we just, like you said, we came together. Um, I think that was, that was the biggest change. You know, we, everybody really meshed well together this year. Um, you know, with the we had our first game got canceled, but in the same week we had to reschedule, and then we had about a month off in between that and our next game. So it was kind of hard, you know, to keep everybody motivated, like going to practice at five thirty in the morning and doing all that when we're not when we don't have the game the weekend. So it was hard, but just everybody just came together and everybody knew that uh, we weren't going to do all this for nothing. So we had a goal in mind and we accomplished it. Right. And I mean, speaking of on the pill performance in terms of yourself, we had a whole episode dedicated to just this topic. I know you were kind of vocal on social media about this as well. That FCS All-American list came out. And for me, there was a big name not in that quarterback class. And that was yours as one of the four best quarterbacks in FCS. Why do you think they overlooked you this year? And right now, in your opinion, are you the best quarterback doing it right now in the FCS? Uh, as far as 
if I'm the best quarterback, you know, I think every quarterback should have confidence in himself. I feel that I'm the best quarterback in the nation. At FBS, FCS, it doesn't really matter the level, but that's how I feel. But uh, as far as all American stuff goes, I think it's just because we only play four games. So I can't be mad at it. Uh, like I said on Twitter, I just use it as motivation. Um, at the end of the day, all those, all four of those quarterbacks are great players. They had great seasons, and uh, you know they did their thing. I can't be mad at it. Uh, I just got to move on and you know continue to do what I do. Absolutely, absolutely. And on this podcast, we are huge fans of Connell Maynard, the head coach of Alabama A&M. His energy is just so contagious on the sideline. That that guy never gives a bad interview. His Ric Flair interview after the SWAC championship might go down as the greatest head coach interview of all time. What makes him such a unique and good coach, and what is it like to play under him? Uh, you know, he's just a – He's a man of God. He's a he's a great man. You know he he walks with he walks with he talks. So everything he says is true. Like he lives it. You know he's not gonna he's not gonna tell you anything that he wouldn't do himself. So I think guys just buy into him, buy into his energy. Like you said, the interview with Ric Flair. You know he's been doing that since he came in. I think that's his favorite wrestler. That's his that's his thing, so to speak. But uh, just playing for him is amazing. You know to have somebody who played quarterback at a very high level in college and played in arena ball and things like that. Just his offensive mind is probably one of the best in college football, and it's just an honor to play for him. And he uh, he has a great coaching staff up under him, and I think he's one of the best coaches in college football. So it's an honor to play for him. He's a great guy. Uh, he's an even better coach, and he's an even better leader. Absolutely, absolutely. And I want to shift to one of the biggest storylines in the country. We have addressed it on this podcast. Zero HBCU players were drafted in this year's NFL draft, which makes no sense to anybody who covers college football. And a lot of people are growing weary of the perception of HBCU athletes entering the draft. There's a lot of talent, including yourself, coming down the pipeline, why do you think that some of these guys are being overlooked? And do you think with all the talent up and coming out of the HBCU ranks, do you think there's going to be a change in perception in the coming years of, in terms of draft prospects coming out of HBCU schools? Uh, I think this year, especially it was, it was harder for everybody from not only FCS, but smaller schools. You know, I think think it was only around, five to seven players drafted from small schools. So it didn't just affect HBCUs, it affected everybody in small schools. I think that just had to do with COVID, not having the combine, not having the normal, you know, flow of the draft season. But uh, as, as far as the future, I think that, you know, the future's on, you know, you're, you know with Deion Sanders coming in and eyes coming into the SWAC and the MEAC and HBCU conferences, I think that it's only going to get better. You know, we have tons of talent. We've had tons of talent and, now that we're getting the eyes on them, you know, it's going to go up. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. So let's go ahead and look forward to next year, uh, 2021 fall season. And there's new, there's two new teams in SWAC with, in four a and M that team cooking. Um, as I listen to a lot of these way too early predictions, uh, Jackson State seems to be one of the more popular choices for a lot of experts and fans to be overlooking. Uh, we seem to be overlooking Alabama A and M as the favorite for the SWAC. Uh, why do you think this team and yourself overlook going twenty twenty one? You know, I think uh, people today, you know, get caught up on the glitz and glamour of college football. You know, at the end of the day, you know, eleven guys on offense, defense, got to go out there and, and play football on the field. You know, all the recruiting, all the all the cameras, all the media attention. You know. That stuff doesn't really matter if you can't put up points or can't stop anybody. So I think that, you know, the SWAC is going to be a great conference. You know, we got we got great teams, and we had great teams already. Everybody's just going to get better. And uh, we have two historically great programs joining uh, not only the SWAC, but our side of the division. So, you know, our journey is not going to be easy, but I look forward to the challenge. And uh, I think that, that, you know, the SWAC as a whole is continuing to grow, and it's one of the best conferences in the FCS. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, so last question from me. I think Zach has another one. But um, going into next season, what are your personal goals? And uh, what, what do you see next season playing out? Uh, 
personally, you know, I want to repeat as fight champions. Uh, I want to go to Celebration Bowl, win the Celebration Bowl, and then all the other person accolades, the first team all confidence and all all American high stuff. That would come. You know, I don't worry about that for real. I just worry about getting my team in the best position to win. And uh, as far as for Alvin Man and them, like I said, just continue to to win. You know, we started this legacy. You know, ever since Coach Man came in, we steady been going up, and, and I just want to continue that. Right, and I mean. For me, when I when I when I look at the NFL draft next year, I expect the name of Kill Glass to be announced next year at the draft. I think you're the best quarterback coming back in the SWAC, one of the best in the country. For you, who are your biggest influences for the quarterback position? And if you had to give yourself your own pro comparison, who would you compare your game to the most? As far as my influences uh, growing up. I was a huge Peyton Manning fan. You know, that was my guy. When it was, like people would ask, are you riding with Tom Brady or Peyton Manning? I always, I would always ride with Peyton Manning, you know. Just his knowledge and uh, his mind was just insane. And, uh, of course, I look up to Tom Brady, you know, take things out of his game. Uh, uh, I enjoy watching Deshaun Watson a lot. You know, he's a guy who just knows how to make plays, you know, on script, off script. He's one of the best in the business. And then uh, Patrick Mahomes also, you know, probably one of the best, young rounds, one of the best quarterbacks to ever play the game. Uh, so just looking up to those guys and taking things that I see from their games. And uh, as far as a pro comparison, I honestly don't know. I wouldn't I wouldn't compare myself to anybody because I'm a quick glass. And you know, I, do, I do things that some guys do well. I do, I do things better than other guys. So, it's one of the things where I don't really get too much into comparison. I just worry about myself and understanding my weaknesses and my strengths and not only strengthening my strengths, but strengthening my weaknesses. Absolutely, absolutely, man. So going into next year, if an NFL, if, if NFL team asks you, what are they getting in a keel glass, how do you answer that question? What, do, what would you bring to an NFL team next year? I'm a leader, I'm a winner, and I'm a passionate guy on the field. Um, I'm not going to give you any problems off the field. Uh, just a guy who's going to come in, be prepared, not only mentally but physically. Um, a guy who knows the game in and out and will learn offense quick. Um, just a guy who's a gamer. You know, It doesn't matter what I have to do to win. Uh, I'll make sure it gets done. Absolutely, absolutely. So, you know, I got two questions left for you, man. The the the, the last one or the next one is, who is the best defensive player that you have ever faced in your career as the quarterback for Alabama A and M? Uh, I think I have to be. I think I have three. So my freshman year, we played Vanderbilt, and they had Zach Cunningham, who plays for the Texans now, and he was all over the field. You know, he had a couple sacks, but that was a long day for us, for sure. And then uh, last year, we played South Carolina State, and uh, number 14, Duran, uh, the corner. His last name, his last name is, uh, you know, not mine, but, uh, yeah, number 14, the corner for South Carolina State, he's a, he's a great player, you know, he's a, he's a lockdown corner, and uh, I look forward to playing him in the fall as well. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, Cunningham is an absolute monster. I mean, that, that dude's going to have a long NFL career. So last question here, man. You're not going to play for Alabama a and forever. You're about you're going to head off to the draft here soon. Who is next for Alabama a and if I, if I'm If I'm listening as an optimistic, you know, Alabama A&M fan, who is coming after Akil Glass to lead this offense, and who should we be on the lookout for after you're going off to the NFL? Uh, you know, I, I personally feel like we have one of the best quarterback rooms in, in all the college football. You know, we got talent from from top to bottom. Uh, we got we got young freshmen. We have uh, C.J. Dixon, who was a four star recruit out of out of Grayson in uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Um, he's a he has all the tools and traits to be a great player. We got a uh, Caden Cole. He's a 
He's a guy in the same Louis area at Krishna Final High School. And, uh, you know, we got a couple of things up our sleeves that I can't really talk about right now. But, uh, you know, we got we got some guys that are going to compete for that starting job. You know, I'm not going to give it to you. Uh, at the end of the day, they have to compete on the field. But uh, we got some great guys coming up. And uh, at the end of the day, Coach Ma, Coach Taylor, and uh, Coach Maynard are going to get those guys prepared no matter who it is. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Well, guys, that is a wrap here, man. We are so happy you got to come on the podcast, man. I'm going to give you a chance. Where can everyone find you on social media? And, and what, and you know, what, just anything that you do outside of football, where can our listeners find you, man? You can follow me on Instagram at aquil underscore glass dot four. Uh, on Twitter at Aquila underscore Glass 4. And uh, that's pretty much it. You can find me there. Um, I don't really go on social media too much in the off season. You know, I don't post my workouts every day, stuff like that. But you know, I'm steady working, steady grinding, trying to get to the next level. So uh, just, I appreciate all the support from everybody. I appreciate you guys for having me. And uh, you know, I look forward to next season. It's going to be a fun one. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. We are big fans here on the podcast, like I told you. Definitely one of our fa- favorite players in the country right now, man. And so we wish you a whole lot of luck on this next season. Just know we'll be we'll be supporting you from here. We'll definitely be covering everything y'all do, and, and you know it closer to the season, man. We'll definitely be reaching out, man. Get, get have you head back on the show again. But guys, make sure to go check out Akil and everything that Alabama A and M does this coming fall. I promise you, they're going to be one of the best teams in the SWAC, and I'm looking for them to make a huge run next year. So I appreciate it, man. But Guys, for the Blue Bloods, man, we, we shout out to Akil. We'll be back later this week with two minute drill and some more Pac 12 content in our patch up in 31 days. But for Akil, for myself, for Brandon and the Blue Bloods, we are out.